I think we can all remember back when the eruption in Iceland stopped air traffic. I mean, I think that was one of the things that really caught the attention of a lot of people and put Iceland on the map was this country that halted air traffic because of an eruption. Over the past week or so, there have been a lot of earthquakes in the Grindavik area, which we can also feel in Reykjavik and, and many other parts of the country. And some of them have been pretty substantial. I mean, we're looking at the news and the weather sites are breaking, taking a look at how many earthquakes are actually happening. But before we get into the actual details, the reason that Iceland actually has so much geothermal energy and, and activity, as well as all these earthquakes and volcanoes, is because the whole country is divided between two plates, tectonic plates, that is. Uh, on one side, we have the European and then the North American plate. And this is one of the things that a lot of people come here to Iceland to, to see because you can actually scuba dive and snorkel in between the two plates. It's a, quite a popular tourist attraction, but now we're actually seeing firsthand what this actually means for the people living here. Now, I've lived in Iceland for quite a while now, and this is the most amount of seismic activity I've experienced. And the earthquakes that are happening are, there's a lot of small tremors that are happening, and you can kind of feel them shaking, but there have been quite big ones, and to the point where the news agencies are starting to set levels of emergency higher. The Blue Lagoon has closed down and sent its employees home in preparation for, you know, potentially larger earthquakes or maybe even eruption. And one thing that I want to do in this video is sort of clear up the facts, look over what's going on and go from there. So a lot of the earthquakes are actually originating in the Reykjanes Peninsula, and that's closer towards Keflavik Airport, so where everyone's going to be coming in. And all of that is, the earthquakes aren't necessarily super close to any large populations. The closest thing would be, as I said, the Blue Lagoon or Grindavik, which is a, a town in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And there have been over 1,700 earthquakes over even just the last 48 hours. Uh, if you take a look at this map here, you can see all of these dots from the Icelandic weather website that shows exactly how many earthquakes they're measuring and the intensity of each of them. One thing that we want to make sure is everyone kind of knows what to do in your house. You know, you're just being told now to secure all your bookshelves and make sure the things that are going to fall off the walls if there's a bigger earthquake. Uh, there's also a lot of talk about how much time has passed since a last big earthquake or eruption. And they're saying in that area, it's been nearly a century since a big earthquake actually happened in that area. Uh, the good news is, is they say there's no real clear signs that there is magma or lava movements going on. And so I think it's, it's hard to predict from what they're saying if there will actually be an eruption. Uh, but they don't believe that that's going to happen. They think that the earthquakes are going to lessen over the next week or so. Uh, but it is very clear that it can't be ruled out that some sort of eruption or, or magma and lava comes to the surface. I mean, the earthquakes have been strong enough that they have cracked some roads. So it's uh, it's it's kind of a... Uh, everyone's kind of tense right now here. And, and we're all just kind of taking it day by day. Now it's living in, in apartments like a lot of people do here. One thing that I, I remember first asking other people is, you know, what do you do if you're, you know, a couple floors up and... You know, the weather's been really bad. You know, how do you get out of the building as, as quickly as possible? How much time? You know, I come I come from a place where we don't have a lot of earthquakes. And uh, some of the buildings here are quite tall. But uh, it's sort of... I'm realizing that you just get a feel for how the earthquake is, if it's going to be something a little bit small, and then just act accordingly. Now I have sort of this packed bag to go bag just in case I do need to leave uh, and be out of the building. Uh, and I have my car, which is obviously gassed up and, and things like that. But I don't, I don't think anyone is, is really, you know, turning their lives upside down at this point. You know, they're, we're very aware of what's going on. There are earthquakes. Things are shaking. And I had some friends who, you know, some things fell off their walls and plants are being knocked over. But it's nothing super, super crazy yet. 
they they do say that there could be all of a sudden a, a larger earthquake. Uh, today, for instance, we had a magnitude of 4.3 that we felt in the region, and uh, it's just sort of a day a day daily thing now. It seems uh, with a lot of shaking. I mean, I think I felt uh, a couple of a couple dozen little tremors here and there, and I think today there was uh, two or three bigger bigger earthquakes which is, again, very strange. Now, as I said, in terms of actual eruptions, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think what they're saying, according to the news, is that these are going to subside, the earthquakes should settle down, and they're, they're comparing it to being sort of in the eye of a hurricane right now, where we're in the middle of it, and it might get worse on the other side, but it might just stop. So... Uh, I guess you know they're doing all they can they're putting all these sensors and and trying to measure as much as they can they say that it's hard to measure the magma because of all of the tremors but um you know i just want to give everyone an update on what's going on i think it's it's something that uh, a lot of people here are worried about especially in in Grindavik, where they're very close to the actual seismic activity and the locations that these are originating but uh, earthquakes occur all over this country in varying degrees and I know Grindavik over the past year has had quite a few and and hopefully this this sort of subsides and everything kind of goes back to normal by next week and everything in 2021 doesn't turn into this eruption and we can you know not go from 2020 into uh, another sort of chaos here in Iceland with a an eruption um, but you know the the worrying part is that it is close to the airport and if there is lava that comes, it could potentially flow over top of the road that connects uh, from Reykjavik to the Keflavik airport. And hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but also, too, you know, they, they do say that a lot of these quakes could occur in the middle of the night, which I've woken up to a couple that have been, you know, two in the morning or eight in the morning. It's <laughs> You don't need to set an alarm clock because you have... You have the earth shaking you awake. Um, but thankfully, nothing has been too too intense. Now, I was in the Reykjanes Peninsula a few weeks back, and I posted a video on some of that stuff. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and taking a look at what kind of changes all of these earthquakes have done to the area. I know from the reports on the news that there have been a lot of uh, rock slides and, and changes to the landscape in that regard. But... Um, you know, it's going to be interesting. I'll post another video with an update just to see if it's changed uh, once it's safe to go back. But in the meantime, I mean, hopefully it, it looks just as it, as it did when I was there last time. I mean, you can take a look at the video I posted uh, a few weeks ago in the uh, geothermal area there. And uh, it's it's quite a beautiful place. So it would be a shame if, if a lot of large rocks were to destroy that and we would have to go and rebuild. So I'll keep you guys updated, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep updated on what's going on, and uh, I look forward to posting a video of the area once everything has calmed down. And we look forward to having more people come to Iceland. Hopefully this doesn't put Iceland back on the map with a big eruption, but uh, when it's safe to travel again, I hope everyone comes and takes a look. Hopefully the videos I'm posting you enjoy it's hard to travel to iceland right now but you can watch those in preparation on where you want to go so until next time just want to keep you all updated and thanks for watching